In our hearts, let us enthrone him. There, let him subdue all that is not holy, all that is not true. Crown him as our captain in temptation's hour. Let his will enfold us in its light and power. May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me get right to the heart of the matter. Today, the feast of Christ the King, the feast of the reign of Christ, is all about servanthood. And the reality that we are all serving someone for some reason. The fundamental question is, do we know who and do we know why? So in our time together this morning, I have more questions for you than I do answers. Questions for us all to ponder in our hearts, upon our lives. And the first question is this, whom do you serve? Who benefits from your service? Who benefits from the work of your hands, the time and the labor and the energy and the commitment of your hearts? Who are the real beneficiaries of your life? Is it the boss, be it an individual or a corporation that grows in wealth and influence? Is it more personal? Are the primary, and let me say, these answers are off, first and foremost are personal, and they're often interwoven. For more often, or alongside the boss, another primary beneficiary of most all our life and effort is quite frankly, simply, ourselves. Those closest to us, those most dear to our hearts. Our families, and occasionally our friends. Who do you serve? Second, why? Why do you serve? Why do you serve this one or these ones? What drives you to work so hard at what you do. What is it you hope to receive? What is it you hope to encounter, if you will, at the end of the day? What drives you to work so hard. Let me ask this. How's it going? How's all of that hard work and all of that service going? Is it working? Are you accomplishing within your home and in your life that which your heart is yearning for? Are you at peace? Are you content? Or are you perpetually unsettled? 
either because the boss wants more or perhaps you want more. Is your heart alive? And is your life fulfilled? Do you feel free and unencumbered or bound up and weighed down? Who do you serve? Why do you serve? And how's it going? I invite you to ponder these questions, not just today, but throughout this week. And I want to offer you something alongside of it. Because my suspicion is, candidly, that for a lot of us, certainly a lot of us in Gross Point and in America today, the answer to those questions are something probably like this, myself or money, I want more, and it ain't working very well. I'm unsettled, I'm bound up, I'm tired, and I'm stretched too far and too thin. Bilbo Baggins comes to mind. Like butter spread too thinly on toast. There is another way, however. It's the way of this community, a way of invitation and a way of peace. A way that promises to give life to our hearts, not to drain them dry. It is, of course, the way of Christ. We gather this Sunday on Christ the King Sunday to remember and to invite us to serve someone else, to serve God first, and let the rest come together. It's interesting. The way of Christ doesn't require us to quit our jobs or sell all that we possess. And in spite of the fact that we say that God wants all of our heart, mind, and soul, the way of Christ actually requires very little. It doesn't require us Thank you, Jesus, to all become priests. We don't need many more of them, I suspect. What we need are more who are alive for God. And God asks, in fact, very little of us. It means that we have to keep those other masters of our lives, our boss, often ourselves, even at times our spouses and our families in their proper place. Close orbits, yes, but not central suns. It is, as we speak of it here, the way of generosity. A way of life marked by gift and gratitude. And so as you consider those three questions, who do I serve, why do I serve, and how is it going, I invite you to consider three alternatives. Three stepping stones into another way of life. That way of generosity in service to God. First, Daily thanks. Not minute by minute or hour by hour, but just daily. A life of intentional gratitude. It can be as simple as stopping at your meal, your next meal, in fact, and saying thanks.
It's one of the great practices or great um, gifts of the discipline of saying grace, that intentionality of gratitude in one's day. St. Ignatius invites us to a slightly more robust form of gratitude, and that is a daily practice, typically at the end of one's day, of becoming aware with gratitude to God and God's gifts throughout the day. What good have you experienced today? What kindness has been given to you? What beauty have you experienced or seen? An intentionality of gratitude, the act of giving thanks each day. Two, an intentional act on your part of generosity to another. Not all day. Not suggesting we lay down our jobs and serve at crossroads from 8 to 8. But rather that each day, somewhere within it, is a moment, an act of intentional generosity to another. An act of grace and kindness that you extend. The beauty of that daily examine by Ignatius invites us to see both the kindnesses that have been given to me this day and an awareness of the kindness that I extended and, as Ignatius would have us, the opportunities I missed. Give thanks. Give kindness. And the third... Give. Give well. An act of tangible gifting to another. Recognizing that all that is mine, what this whole life of generosity invites us to do, is to recognize that what is mine, my heart, my hands, and my wealth, are not merely for me. They are, in fact, for the betterment of all of God's kingdom. Three simple acts. A daily gratitude, a daily act of kindness, and a daily act of generosity. All with the intentionality of giving praise to God. It doesn't, it won't consume us. God doesn't want to suck us dry and leave us bare. God instead wants us to be filled in order that we might overflow with life for ourselves and for one another. Friends, we all serve someone for some reason. How's it going? And remember, There is another way. Amen.